everyone. So uh, today we're going to do something relatively simple. Just play with some curves and morph those curves onto a surface. So let's just type in grasshopper. And we're going to just start out with a, a plain surface. Okay, we'll give it a dimension of, let's say, 25 by 25. I don't think it'll matter in the end um, what size it is, because we'll probably end up scaling stuff. Let's type in populate geometry. And we're going to start off with maybe 125 points. Okay, and then let's type in circle. We'll add a circle to each one of those points. And let's just add a random radius um, to each one of the circles there. So let's type in random. And I'm going to type in domain. So we need to give it kind of a bounce. So construct domain here. The number of random numbers we need can go right to the points. And then uh, Let's type in 2 for the range here, just like that. We'll get these all kind of organized. Okay, so let's make some smaller ones. Plug the random into the radius. That's looking pretty good. We could probably go smaller even on some of them. Maybe bigger on some of the others. Just enough to overlap. Awesome. And then we're just going to type in sphere. Okay, we could probably just give that a dimension of 25 for now, or for the radius there. All right, and then we're going to do a morph command. I think it's morph onto surface or map to surface. So that's asking for our curves that we want to uh, morph to the surface here. It's asking for our source of our our source plane, which would be the plane surface we started at the beginning, and then the target surface. So that would be our sphere. So. If you're following along, it should start to look like this. So you'll notice, um, you know, so if we were to unwrap this sphere, basically it wouldn't perfectly line up to um, our, our plane surface at the beginning. So what we need to do, or what we can do, we could either modify the length of the plane surface or we can just kind of eyeball it. So I think if we just eyeball it today, it might be just fine. And then we can start to probably make it a little bit crazier than just mapping cert circles onto a sphere. So um, we do scale non-uniform for this. And if we start to mess with it, we can start to see how we can make those circles appear more cylindrical there. OK. And then I'm going to start to mess with the x, too. Actually, it looks pretty cool, like a little fin or something. So maybe we'll keep that. I'm going to bring it a little bit lower. Maybe this one goes a little bit higher. Something like that. And then what I'll do next is actually, let's just bring these all forward. Um, what I'll do next is actually mess with the number of points that we started off with at the beginning. So let's do more than 125. So we fill it out. Excellent. That's looking pretty cool. All right. So next I'm just going to pipe them out. Pipe. We'll use mesh pipe as usual. And so obviously the, you're going to have some bad geometry just because some of the curves are getting uh, pinched together. Um, and I'm going to just re reuse our random uh, for the radius. So we'll give it kind of different textures in there. So we'll plug that into here. Um, first radius, let's just say it's like 0.125. Second one, we could do 0.5. And so that would be the smaller one, bigger one. There we go. That's actually looking pretty cool. I like it. We could probably even go smaller on some of them if we wanted to. And then just to add variations in the actual materials, I'm just going to do a random split list. We'll do it three different times for three different materials. OK, I'm going to type in join, mesh join. Flatten that out, make sure they're all one singular mesh. We'll do that three different times, because I'm thinking we're going to have a light layer. Okay, and if we just space those all out, we can bake them. And I think that's pretty much it for the grasshopper side. So if it turns red, that just means it's a bad mesh. Um, it, it, it'll still render in Lumion and all that stuff. It's just, it's just a bad mesh. Not a big deal. So there's points up here that you know we could potentially just delete out holding Control Shift, but I kind of like them, and it might make the picture at the end look pretty cool. 
So I'm just going to leave it for now. All right, so I'm thinking let's add a little bit more texture in here potentially. So I'm going to just use the gumball command, hold shift, duplicate that down. We'll do an inner layer. So we just get just a little bit more depth within this scene. Okay, let's go to shaded so we can see what we're doing. Okay, and then maybe this will be the light layer on the inside there. I don't want too many lights, so I'm just gonna do that one. And then we'll do this layer, let's say as, uh, let's just say concrete for now. Okay, maybe this layer is some sort of metal. And maybe these two inside layers that are left, uh, maybe we'll just kind of leave them all the same. So uh, we'll just say it's those. Okay, so if we go to Arctic mode, you'll start to see what we just created. Awesome. And I'm thinking the scene here is going to be kind of a mountain area. So what I'm going to do is just lock down that layer. We'll create a plane. Okay. I don't think it needs to be super big. Let's make it there. We'll type in rebuild. 125, 125. Looks great. We'll turn our points on. And if we go to the select tab up here, we can use the brush with the points on. Basically what we'll do is just kind of make it look like kind of a smaller mountain here. So almost like a, if you were looking plant, it almost looks like a spider or something with the paintbrush here. Okay. So that's gonna be our first kind of set there bring that up just like we've done in the past here and if it starts running slow we might want to switch it over to mesh so the next one here we can do it you know relatively kind of sloppy doesn't have to be anywhere as precise as tracking down where we just hit before okay do it again back here. Okay, hopefully this doesn't slow down the model too much. It may. A little bit slow. That's no big deal. Okay, and then through here, what I'm going to do is just randomly kind of go like this. I don't know if it'll look good, but basically we're just selecting kind of peaks and bounds through here. So you notice it's relatively random, and then we'll bring it up just like that. Okay, let's do the same thing at a kind of higher frequency. So it's just every so often. Might not look like a mountain right now, but it, it will. We'll do it through here. This will be kind of the peak. for that to load and then from here I'm just going to type in smooth smooth it once and then let's mesh it out okay and if we type in reduce mesh it should start to resemble mountain range I'm going to do 55% for the first run we might have to do this multiple times and then we'll probably scale it uh, in the Z direction quite a bit and then we can just play around with the mesh let's do it Maybe one or two more times. It's running relatively quick. So how's that starting to look? That's looking all right. But one thing I might do is just kind of bring in the middle portion there up just a bit. Maybe bring some areas down. Okay, maybe this one more like that. Happens if we type in reduce mesh one more time. It's starting to look better. Okay, I'm just going to scale it in Z direction, bring it down, and I'm going to scale the whole entirety out. Just like 
like so. We're going to fit our model somewhere in the peak here. Let's go to Arctic mode, see what we're doing. So now we're modeling pretty much for the view. So I'm really liking sort of here. If we bring that down. I want these to appear pretty big. This middle section just a bit more so it looks more like a buildup. Same through here. Like I said, now we're pretty much just modeling for the view. Yeah, that one's not so good. So eyeball is key. So that's looking pretty decent. Okay. I'm just going to unlock everything, select our model. I'm just going to paste it around the scene just a bit. Maybe one back here. Let's see what that's starting to look like. And maybe all of these could be scaled up just a bit more. We lifted them. This one might want to be turned just a bit. This one, maybe this one goes down. This one comes way down. I might actually flip this all the way around. looking pretty good. All right, let's go back to shaded here. I'm going to make this a rock layer. Okay, and what I'm going to do next is just scale in the Z direction, tap Alt to duplicate. Let's get some kind of grass in the foreground there. Okay, we're going to bring it lower and we'll scale it out so it doesn't look all uniform or maybe scale it in. There we go. So have some nice kind of grass features rolling through here. And we should be all set for Lumion. All right, so we're in Lumion. Um, it imported really quickly, and just probably because it doesn't have a lot of mesh faces. So uh, we'll just get started with some materials. So I'm kind of thinking this might be kind of a snow scene. So we're gonna fake kind of that grass layer that we had previously. Um, we'll put down some soil. We'll make it seem like it's sand. But we'll do, um, basically we're gonna scale up the texture map, just like that. We'll put some colorization in there so it's nice and white. Put some reflectivity up, bring the relief out quite a bit. And that should kind of somewhat look like sand. Um, and if it doesn't, we'll just mess with the texture maps. And we'll make the rocks uh, relatively look like kind of snowy peaks there. Bring up the scale. There we go. And then uh, material-wise, let's start off with lights since we basically can do whatever with those. Just double-click, go to settings, emissive layer. Let's turn that up. Um, this, let's do this one. It's kind of a white material, just like so. Metal, we'll do some sort of aged uh, bronze for now. If it doesn't look good, we can always change it. And I'm slightly nervous with this model, so we're going to do some 2D grass for up here um, just to kind of add some green to the scene. Bring up the re 
a new relief. I'm going to bring up the texture map quite a bit. Maybe that's not green enough either. What other stuff they got? It's kind of that neon green. That might look pretty cool. Let's do the stripes. That could look cool. Stripes it is. All right, let's bring that scale up. Bring the relief all the way up. That should look pretty cool. Kind of a snowy scene. And then through this little area, I might add some just some evergreen trees. Or conifers. Um, let's just say through here. How big are these? They're pretty small, so we'll paint it out. Maybe something like that. I don't know how much we'll actually be seeing, so we don't have to go too far with it. Just kind of painting them in. I don't know if we'll actually be able to see through here, but we'll just give it kind of a hint. Same for over here. I don't even think we'll be able to see that far out, but we'll do it anyway. All right, and I think we should be all set for picking some views here. Okay, so let's see what we got here. I'm gonna bring this pretty far can see some of the trees there and I want some space in between each one of our models okay let's bring that just a hair lower just like so I think this would be a potential view let's do custom that looks pretty good let's get some fog in the background using our weather precipitation so it's kind of a snowy scene let's make it for some extra fog there like that. We could do real skies. We could do it extra, kind of a moodier sky, maybe. See where the heading is on that. Awesome. Okay. What happens if we bring that out really far? Nah, that doesn't look right. in Rhino by default it's at 50 so I just want to kind of match up what we had originally so let's try around 50 let's zoom in on these guys so we got the trees in the foreground I'm gonna lift our view up quite a bit okay the heading might be a little bit too much fog but we'll add in a Sun later Actually, right now, keep our sun, brighten it up just a bit. Now it's just looking really, really dark. Okay, what are we doing? Maybe it's the fog. It's definitely the fog in the real skies. Precipitation back on. We'll change the fog out just a bit. Bring that down. Okay, let's go back to our real skies really quick. That was too moody. Okay, let's do maybe an overcast guy. the best one can't even see anything <laughs> it's tricky let's maybe just make our own sky let's go to sky and clouds master sky mount there awesome we'll do low clouds and the high clouds there cloud brightness bring that all the way up softness we'll make it relatively rigid sky brightness bring that a little bit low Okay, mess with our 
our sun. Let's get it right about in here. Sun height should be lower potentially. Should be pretty good. I'm gonna go to a color correction. I feel like it's always so warm. It should be relatively cold scene. Tint. I don't know what that does. <laughs> going to kind of keep messing with the sun here. That's looking better. I'm just kind of worried about that horizon line that you see out in the distance. What if we do horizontal clouds out there? So maybe we'll add in a little bit more fog. Okay, and I might take these outside bands. Make them almost completely white through there. Let's make it a little bit emissive. Just a bit. It's rain or snow. That's looking better and better. Okay, and our sun. Probably bring that up. Make sure the direction looks right. Yeah, I'm liking I'm liking all this. Grass isn't necessarily showing quite as much as I'd like, but honestly, it looks pretty good. I wonder if we just change the grass out for a different material. Um, maybe a kind of a green glass, potentially. That could kind of poke through in there rather nicely. See it, it might go higher. What's our original view? Actually, looks pretty good. Good. I want a little bit of space in between each one of them so we can see their three distinct objects. But that looks pretty good. I'm going to save that view. Let's just mess with uh, the sun just a bit more. Okay, and then let's play with the material. I wonder if that outside one should be something else. Maybe something darker. see what this does. I don't know about that one. Hmm, what should that be? I don't think it should be grass either. things that doesn't work. Let's go back to white maybe. Might be the sun option too. It's kind of goofy.
here again. Don't do this as this. Now it's starting to get a little bit lost in the scene due to the emissive uh, settings. Turn those off completely. Colorization will turn that off just a bit. We'll just play with the sun. That's definitely what's going on here. Okay, I want to make sure it's relatively centered. Let's bring that up to right around 50. clouds yet so I wonder if real skies can actually help us at all it's starting to help slowly this one seems seems a little bit lopsided but Messes everything up. Too far evening. Too purple. Hmm. So tricky. What did we have before? Sunset. Heading was way back here, I believe. this, I think. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. I'm going to play with how much snow is actually sitting in the scene here. Go too much, it might look a little bit kind of weird. Just mess with that sun again. I hate to keep going back to this, but if we were doing a movie, it might look good that way, but if we're just doing one image, probably wouldn't sell it. That looks pretty good. I just want to check to see if we can get more trees in the foreground there. That actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think we'll probably just go with that. I wish the ceramic would show up with just a hair more, but that looks pretty good. It's with the sun somehow. I like that shot. We're going to try one more material kind of study here. See how if we can just get it to be brighter. And maybe that's just not the material for this, too. So let's turn down the reflectivity, the gloss, we'll turn that all the way down. So it's kind of just the pure, just matte finish. I'm kind of liking it. And let's see. The green pops through, but I wonder if this is kind of, uh, maybe it's not a green scene. Maybe it's a, something else. Try that 
pass one more time. It's too dark, way too dark. Try a different shade of green, maybe. Ooh, that's it. Awesome. Yeah, we'll render that. this out and we'll head over to Photoshop. All right, so it came out a little bit dark. So before we start kind of burning and dodging, I'm just going to do an image tone image color. I don't know what the color. Let's go back to what we had. And then let's just use our uh, dodge tool and just brighten up some areas. So I know it's kind of a dark scene in general, but I think just kind of put it or bringing out some highlights in here will kind of bring in some depth to the overall scene. And then for these background areas where we didn't have anything modeled, I'm just going to use the lasso tool and just kind of highlight some areas through here. It's gonna be so small that you probably wouldn't even notice, but just try to bring in some fog. Use a brush. Just do something like that, maybe, maybe a little bit smaller. We'll do the same for the other side. Let's make a new layer for that. Alright, same thing. We could probably match the same color, so it just kind of goes away. The other side doesn't, won't be able to see it anyway. So I'm just going to use my erase tool here. Come through, just kind of smear it all out. Oop. Just about like that. Won't be able to notice. Okay. Then I'm just going to flatten these two together. I'm just going to hit Control J to duplicate the layer. Maybe mess with the brightness contrast just a bit. highlights of these trees so we got a nice foreground to kind of look at just to show some scale to this overall thing. Just pump out that color. It's looking pretty good. Auto contrast maybe. What's auto color do right now for this? Eh. Kind of liked it a little bit less than. All right and then as usual we'll vignette top and the bottom. Not so much just because the trees are there, but the top we can do quite a bit. Maybe not that far, but that's fine. Control T to tree transform this. Okay, bring the opacity down. And I think that's it. Let's flatten it out. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking with you soon. Have a good one.